everyone, welcome to another talk. Today we are with my friend Elena. So, Elena, <laughs> sorry. How do they call El you in England? Elena, Helena, <laughs> with the H. <laughs> but I always say that it's Elena. Elena. <laughs> Elena. <laughs> so, she's my friend, she's Italian, but she lives in Leicester now. So, in the Midlands. <laughs> Molise. <laughs> <laughs> We I, met a Japanese. We Japanese. met a Japanese because he was in the Mediterranean town <laughs> in the cave. <laughs> <laughs> I remember it was me, you, and Mario sitting on the same line. Who is Mario? Is he the guy I hate a lot? No, you know, it's the guy that was like, living in China. Oh, so it's the guy I like a lot. <laughs> we we met and then we went to another class together. Mm -hmm. But I didn't remember your name and you didn't remember my name. Which is fine. Which is still happens. Like, I still don't remember people's names. No. <laughs> and then we went to the English class, so writing our names to be like, oh, I've been to this class. And mm. I was like, Rosa. Ah, ah Rosa. Yeah. So sign first. So I can read yeah. it. We, there were basically seven classes, English different classes, and we were in the same one. So Which we just good. went from one building to another together. And we, I think it, that's how it happened. And then <laughs> it's been a long way since then. Yeah, so. like yesterday when they asked how long you've been knowing each other, and I realized it's seven years. Seven years, like, yeah, that's true. Uh, and also because it's in the seven years that like we were we went, adults, yeah, actually. We were we went through so many different things yeah. together. Yeah, I just never realize how long I've been knowing people until I think about mm. how many years have been since I did these things and mm. then what are the people that went through my life during this period of time yeah. and actually we shared so many things together about relationships, jobs, travels, so yes. <laughs> adventures together yeah we've been in three countries together no four if you count Bulgaria, Romania Italy Bulgaria, Italy, Bulgaria Romania, Romania Japan Japan England, England. we need to travel five, more six, six mm. countries we're just like friends mm -hmm. but then we end up working together yeah no, you went to Korea. Yeah, I went to Korea for three months. The year I went to Korea was 2015. I came back from Korea to Italy and then after just one month I came to Bulgaria. Bulgaria. Sofia. It was July. It was five years ago. Five years ago. Oh my gosh. You started mm -hmm. to work with me after, after you... I moved back. Mm -hmm. And then I moved here in 2018. Same year I went to Japan. Like You, went, went, you went in October 2018. Yeah. Ah. Yeah, connected the dots. <laughs> so you moved to different countries. Mm -hmm. How mm -hmm. did you feel at first when mm -hmm. you moved to Bulgaria, which was your first country actually, actually moving to it, not yeah. traveling to another country? First of all, you were not alone. So. No, mm -hmm. so I was with my ex-boyfriend and uh, all the partner, the working partner. It was a weird experience because we were just working from home and not having any outside relationship. Mm -hmm. And I tried to make friends in weird modern ways. So just like literally mm -hmm. adding people on Facebook, like randomly meeting them. Just because of course, when you live in another country and you don't speak the language and you don't like have any integration with everything around, you just feel a little bit alone mm -hmm. if you spend the time with the same person all the time. So I didn't like it overall, mm -hmm. I didn't like it. It was my idea to come back to Italy because I was feeling really depressed. Uh, I just couldn't do it. Was it a problem because of the city or People I don't think that Bulgaria is a country that just represents me. Mm, okay. Uh, when I was in Bulgaria, I was like, I want to move to England because well, she was time, living in Sofia, which is the capital. So but it's not like living mm. in a capital, you know. Yeah, you know. No, I, I just wanted to clarify because yeah. it, it was not like countryside or no. another minor city. No. My life was literally in the city center, mm -hmm. and I didn't have any like knowledge of the city or knowledge of anyone around. Mm -hmm. So like during winter, like I was, I spent like 15 days closing the house. Without mm. even leaving, and that really like impact my mental health. And also, I was coming from Bulgaria to Leicester to visit my two friends that were living here. Mm -hmm. So when I was coming here, and I was seeing them like quite happy with the relationship, the fact that they were working, they were happy about jobs that like for my ex-boyfriend were like considered to be like less compared to yeah, yeah. ours. Mm -hmm. So like when I started to see this comparison of them being happy and their own house, even though it was like it wasn't the, the nice house I had, of course, but when I started to see this compressor, I was like, I don't want to live there anymore. I want to move to England. I was literally like, I want to move to England 
my plan was that we were still working online, mm -hmm. but I was doing a part-time job in like a coffee shop or a okay. restaurant. Just to have interaction with people. I need interaction. I need, people. <laughs> I need to talk to people. I am. That was literally the point. Like, I can't be... I can be lonely, but I can't be a lonely person that doesn't have any human interaction with anyone mm -hmm. else. It's disgusting. It's literally like a way of living that doesn't represent me. So when I came back to Italy, I was like really enjoying it, even though I don't like living in Italy yeah but you did know people who yeah. made you feel good enjoy if your time I even enjoyed spending time with my family mm. <laughs> so Bulgaria wasn't for me mm -hmm. yeah. but so Italy wasn't for me as well yeah so there is no problem with that I mean you're talking to me so yeah I have talked about oh. this many many times but I don't know the proper definition so when someone is born not feeling their proper gender Right? Ah, okay. So I do feel like I was born in a country that doesn't represent myself. Sort of like literally being born as an Italian but never being Italian. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I, know I totally like get it. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I don't want to insult anyone. No, I think it's just. Hey. Just like you don't have any national identity. No. I think national pride. No. You're not patriotic. I mean, I'm patriotic to nice things like food. I know that I luckily. For that thing, I'm born in Italy, so I know what good food means. That's the only thing I think. And art, and like yeah. passion and curiosity, which are a thing that I found in Italian people, which maybe is not weird. in everyone, not in anyone. <laughs> but the curiosity that I have on things is not really common, and I've seen it in other Italian people. But of course, I've seen also Italian people that don't give a shit about anything. Mm -hmm. I mean, being patriotic is not even. I think it's stupid in a way yeah. because you literally don't choose to be born in a country. It just happened to, yeah, <laughs> to be there. You don't have to have like this yeah. unconditional love. Yeah. You can not like Your where you country, were born yeah. and just be like, I'm sorry, I refuse to be like part of that. I was scrolling on Instagram. I think one of the pages I follow for motivation, <laughs> motivational quote. There was one that was like, you don't have to bloom where you, where you are planted. And when I read that quote, it resonated with me so much. Yeah. I was like, oh, that's literally me. Same and time. me as well, yeah. like, honestly, yeah. I do feel like... There are other people that feel like that. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, that's made them make yeah. me feel less but alone. You know what is weird? That we think that, but I've known so many English people and they're okay where they are. Yeah. Like the million person I told you the other mm -hmm. day. So this guy is from Milan and he said that He's lucky to be born in Milan because he loves Italy and he has a possibility to work there and he feels like completely okay and at home mm -hmm. in Milan. I know so, so many people like that in Italy. So is it because we are not born in the city mm -hmm. that represents us in Italy? Where, or would you be the same if we were born in Milan, maybe? Mm -hmm. yeah, that's or true. you would like be like, oh, I love Milan, everything is here and I'm just gonna stay because it's my I don't country. need to move, yeah. Maybe you didn't even think about it. I think maybe you had more possibilities. Yeah, that's true. But we went to university. It's famous for Asian languages. Uh -huh. So I think we as person are already a different person. We have enough interest interest in foreigner languages, specifically mm -hmm. Asian languages. Which says a lot in yeah. Italy, basically. Yeah. <laughs> Not everyone likes even to think about studying Asian languages. Yeah. So, yeah. If someone is studying engineering in Italian, not as a double degree with English. Yeah. They already, might not have any interest yeah, in moving in away. Moving. Why should I move away? Also, I to know grow. some... <laughs> yeah, but growth is different for many people. I, I yeah, agree with you because I don't like my country and I want to be there. Yeah. But I also know people at our university, so Asian languages mm -hmm. or even European languages. Like and they don't want to move. They don't want to move. Yeah. Because they, they just say, I have everything here. What? I always... Yeah. Your mom. Yeah. I always wonder, oh, yeah. is it about you really feel like that? You have already, not everything you want, but you feel good with your surroundings. I yeah. think you don't know. Making it's, the jump yeah. into the unknown. Into I, the unknown. <laughs> I think people don't even ask themselves. Yeah. Don't even question that. Mm, that's the problem. We, we question everything. I, I think, think we question it, too much. Yes. <laughs> I don't think you have to be ignorant or smart. It's literally a matter of not asking yourself questions. Mm -hmm. Some people are curious. Yeah. It's curiosity that just brings you. Curiosity makes up for fear yeah. sometimes. I've talked 
many with many people who like traveling as mm. I do because I had the example of people who don't want to travel mm. and the example of people who love traveling. I met a couple of people that were like I don't want to travel because I don't have money for mm -hmm. example they say that and then they are in mind me every year and then I'm like do you just like spend everything on your everyday life because you know that you don't want to travel you mm -hmm. don't want to leave your country not even for traveling if you got those people that don't want to even travel which is a temporary like mm -hmm. knowledge mm -hmm. of a place yeah you can't accept expect them mm -hmm. to even questioning the fact that they would be better in another country mm -hmm. because they just don't care they don't think about they don't it don't think about it yeah which is okay like i would love to be like uh, that <laughs> yes i would love to be like oh i want to live in naples and yeah. be like laughed at just because i got a fringe and yeah. because i'm wearing a sweater yeah i want to i just want to leave want to leave somewhere where nobody cares yeah which Here. is he had no but it gives a fuck actually can get against you mm -hmm. because maybe you just you might feel like nothing because nobody cares so if you it's not that nobody cares because you're not there as an individual nobody cares because you are an individual so you can do whatever you whatever want whatever the fuck you want yeah. with yourself and they expect you to do the same for them it's a matter of individuality yeah <laughs> like there is a lady who comes straight to where i work she's like maybe 60 she dressed all in pink and everything she has accessory wise is with cats on really? she even has like an ipad cover with like cats on and the phone and then the wallet and she comes around with like disney like i was like oh this woman must be like i don't know a retired woman mm -hmm. and then i went to the sex clinic and she was working there as a consultant and she was dressed <laughs> all in pink with cats everywhere and i was like <laughs> she works in an environment where like professionality is asked mm -hmm. and she was dressed the same way that she came and like I questioned I was like oh she must be retired yeah yeah she can't do like a professional That's job <laughs> my Italian mind is like oh she she just she can't do a professional be, yeah. job and she was the consultant, consultant in the sex clinic. True. I think that's very like, curious that this happened with me too. I feel I'm too Italian sometimes mm -hmm. but every time I think that is when I'm questioning something. Whenever I'm, Based on appearance. Yeah. yeah. And because we whenever I'm do doing that. something that I think is not good, I, I know it's not good, but my subconscious mind mm -hmm. already made the thought. I think, oh, maybe that's an Italian thing, which is like about appearance, assuming basically. So it's appearance. Like at the beginning when I moved here, I was like, oh, I can't, I can't go with my ankles out from wearing jeans because mm. it's February, and then I see everyone doing yeah, that, that's true. and no one because you know in Italy we got like when you get the deeds yeah. on your jeans, everyone is just criticizing you because you want to do like stylish. Yeah. No, I think not anymore but before it became fashionable yeah. <laughs> so like I was like oh I can't do this I can't go out mm. just with this weather because people are gonna stop me in the street and be like are you cool yeah they don't they I think, don't care I think like five years ago I think it was even questioning at some point it's like January Good and I was like I would wear a leather jacket for this weather because yeah. I'm not that cold yeah. but people would just stare at me I remember I still wore the leather jacket and I got some people staring at me literally for a jacket in January mm -hmm. I didn't mind back then I already didn't care but you can help but notice that people are judging you yeah when people got nothing to do they spend time on criticizing others yeah, yeah that's that's literally that's what they true. do. How is my appearance affecting your yeah, life? Nothing. It's even worse when they come up to you and tell you. Yeah, they they used to like. I remember when I was really young, I was like an emo kid, I guess, mm -hmm. since I was like 14, 15. The and emo I, face. Yeah. <laughs> I remember I was wearing, I made myself a Pokemon necklace with the piece mm -hmm. that you mm -hmm. bought in Ikea mm -hmm. and what happened is that I was in a train and this really big woman, she literally mm -hmm. just like sit down like this and she was with this fan and she was like, are you hot? And I was like, no, okay. And she was like, what the fuck is your necklace? And I was like, it's a Pokemon character and she's just like, shit. And I was like, uh. <laughs> How did you process that what just happened? I was literally like, Mm -hmm. I was reading, maybe I was looking weird because I was a 15 year old, or, uh, years old kid alone on the train with a Pokemon necklace reading. <laughs> but it wasn't the only time, like I was wearing buns, where, mm, buns were a thing, <laughs> and my hair was pulled because this woman, and she literally just pulled my hair from like the window of the train. I was looking, if, even in middle school, I had like red hair. They pulled my hair because they thought it was a wig. And I was like, I don't want to live here. What? Why so do tried, people touch you? I mean, I don't it's know. Just... <laughs> I did try to be normal, but it took me like 
like I started to try no. to be normal when I cut all my hair. Mm -hmm. You remember when I yeah, cut yeah, all, I all my hair and I was <laughs> like, oh, that's a fresh start. I literally just like... Literally like, just a fresh and start. I remember that I was wearing like beige trousers, like really tight and like Lacoste polo. <laughs> Me. <laughs> I was yeah. wearing Lacoste polo <laughs> shirt. <laughs> I had a trench coat at a point, which fair enough, but I don't like myself with trench coat. Mm -hmm. They're like, no one gives a fuck if I'm wearing all black. If I am wearing red lipstick at 8 a.m. in the morning. Mm -hmm. That's literally like my lips like... Like every day I wear red lipstick and I don't because I like care. it. <laughs> no one cares if I wear Dr. Martens in August. No one cares if I wear those pair of shoes. And I literally like progressively started to You know what? I think there. I think the thing is that in Italy nobody cares but everyone feels entitled enough to tell you. Yeah. They what they think about it. They don't care if you're dressing like that, but if they think you look awful, yeah. they you remember when I was called witch because I was oh, wearing yeah, yeah, a purple true. lipstick? <laughs> oh, the wi not wiz oh, the wizard. wizard. Yeah, wizard. Like, it's just a lipstick. It makes you feel very uncomfortable. But yeah, it makes you feel uncomfortable. Like I'm not free mm -hmm. to be myself. To express myself. Um, just for a lipstick. Just mm -hmm. for a lipstick. Just for hair. Like you can have long hair. It's too long. You can have short hair. It's too short. You can have like really mm -hmm. nice like pop cut and you look like too old. Why do people feel entitled to stop you? Mm -hmm. It's a thing that happens in Italy. Mm -hmm. It doesn't happen in other countries. True. Now we are old enough to... <laughs> don't give a fuck. Yeah, to not give a fuck even in Italy. I mean, mm. I don't care. I literally no. don't care about how I dress, how I yeah. look in Italy anymore. Yeah. And I think everything is starting to change too. Mm -hmm. At least at university, people really don't care. It's 2020 and people finally are starting not to care too much about people. They should stop in general. They should just yeah. stop. Maybe in 10 years everything will change i hope so yeah same but i'm not coming back <laughs> actually about this you just once in a while get back to italy just mm -hmm. to say hi to your family is there something you only notice when you get back from uh, after a long time you've st been staying here in yeah. Leicester what are the things you notice? first thing I noticed the uh, noise but just because I live in a small town mm -hmm. I don't live in London so mm -hmm. of course London is more noisy mm -hmm. than Leicester Leicester is quieter and the first thing I noticed as soon as I get out of the airport is like people just horning all the time just like screaming and it's the first thing I noticed mm -hmm. last time I came back and I take I took the alibus the driver had an argument with a person and I made a video of it I never do but I made a video and he came to me and he was like I would appreciate if you just delete the video and I was like you should work like mm -hmm. I'm here waiting for you to just like leave from the parking lot and it just like putting more people in the fucking bus and mm -hmm. then just like saying to the guy really randomly like oh I fucked your mother mm -hmm. be really really mature mm -hmm. that's the first thing you notice people being argumentative all the time mm -hmm. uh, messy uh, noisy and then of course the fact that there is dirt everywhere at least in true, Naples true. like uh, you can't walk around without notice how much <laughs> trash there is in the street and it just breaks my heart all the time. So that's the first thing I noticed. It is so dirty. I was in Japan for basically almost one year, like 10 months. And when I came back, it was summertime. So it was so noisy, honking all the time. Like, it's just like uncomfortable. Like, and smelly. It smells, yeah. Naples smells and so much. And during summer. Yeah, oh, it was so much. I was like, when, the first time I went to Shibuya, I was like, why does the area smells so much? But but it's not everywhere, it's just in certain points. I yeah. don't know why, maybe it's something underground, I have no idea. But in Naples, it's everywhere. Mm -hmm. And everywhere is noisy, everywhere mm -hmm. is smell. And people are shouting every all time, time, all the time. Why are you talking so loudly? Yeah. What, what's your problem? It's the first thing you notice about Italian people in England as well. Like, I am noisy. They're so loud. People tell me that I'm really loud, but I'm loud because I'm loud, like, mm -hmm. whatever I am anyway. But they do say that Italian people are loud because it's true. It's true. We are uh, loud. We scream, we scream all the time. It's like more like empathetic. <laughs> empathetic. <laughs> emphatic? Empathetic is like when you feel the feeling. Oh. Like emphatic is when you. <laughs> <laughs> emphatic. <laughs> People are very noisy and mm. they scream all the time. When they're talking to the phone on the train, yeah. everyone is listening to their conversation. Oh, that, yeah, that's a thing. Yeah, that's a thing that the, and, not, and doesn't happen in England. Yeah, because People no one talk wants to talk about their private stuff yeah. on the train because it no. was literally listening to a conversation where a woman, she was a housekeeper and she said, she was talking to a friend on the commuting in uh -huh. the morning and she said that she usually changed the bed sheets of the son of this lady yeah. two times a week mm -hmm. but the son had his girlfriend over, over yeah. and he asked her can you change the bed sheet and she said 
okay, uh, this is gonna cause a problem with your yeah. mother. And he's like, please. And she did because she's been a housekeeper for that family for so many years. So, mm -hmm. And then her mother said, you didn't have to change the bed sheet. And they were having an argument about that. And she said, yeah, it's not my problem if your son fucks people <laughs> during, <laughs> during the week. And I was like, how can you tell these things on the train? I remember this conversation That's because really I was weird. shocked. Yeah, yeah. And maybe she really wanted people to know yeah. that she just like... She was right. <laughs> I've also heard so many conversations about people talking to their lawyers and they're like Yeah, that's really personal stuff. Yeah. That's so personal. Why are you talking and about like, like lawyer thing? Yeah, I have to go to the court this week. And I was like why are you telling this to people on yeah. the train? I mean, what if I think you are a criminal or something? I have no yeah. idea. Don't talk about your personal stuff. Yeah. There are also some positive sides, of course. The sun. <laughs> the sea. <laughs> the food. <laughs> <laughs> I miss the sun so much. Like, when I see the sun, I'm like, ah! Oh my god, light! I do, do miss the sun. It's just like, always grey. You get used to it. Of course, people that are born in England, they don't even notice that. Mm. They don't understand that there is an impact of the sunlight on their True. behavior. True. You don't even know this until you yeah. live in a country. But we are from Naples and we notice the opposite when mm. there is no sun. Yeah. True. I do like miss it a lot. I miss sunny days, yeah. wearing sunglasses all year mm -hmm. long. Like I got a pair of sunglasses just like in the drawer over them. Yeah, so I can't true. wear them. I just can't wear them. Mm -hmm. There is no point in wearing them. And also I think we notice so many things because we also understand the language. Yeah. Like I don't think as a tourist, you would notice. You would just be in your own mind because mm -hmm. when we are tourists, we're just looking on Google Maps. I think it's just normal to notice more when you understand what people are saying around you. Yes. It, everywhere, I mean. Yeah, it takes time to adjust to notice the differences. Mm -hmm. So like, maybe at the beginning, everything was like blurred in my mind. Mm -hmm. And then like, I started to notice like, how yeah. pe people do things in different ways. And like, then it gets you. Yeah. Say, well, this is not how it's supposed to be. No, you're just so like. So this was wrong my whole life. <laughs> yeah. Like, for example, cleanness. I understood that I'm from a really clean family. Mm -hmm. Like I did know mm -hmm. that they are clean, but I didn't know how clean they were until mm -hmm. I came here. Because the concept of just like cleaning your bathroom every three days, mm -hmm. for me was like, oh, that's not enough. Because mm -hmm. my grandmother does it every day. Mm -hmm. In England, they just don't clean their toilet. Mm -hmm. They just don't. I had a friend who's been in the same flat for two years. She never cleaned the toilet. Doesn't it smell? It was horrible. <laughs> like under, like, you know, into yeah, yeah. it was black. Ew. She never cleaned the toilet. She said it without any bro, I never cleaned my toilet. And I was like, mm, be proud. I'm gonna squat from now on. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna squat. Or like cooking, for example, mm. cooking. Like we are so used to cook our food. Even if it's just like putting some pasta and just like boiling it and just literally do like raw pasta like that. We will cook it because we'd rather have our pasta than just like taking takeaways stuff. Mm. That is True. Just Takeaway culture that is like everything is quick and instant, they lost the process, which is not good. The thing is that in Italy, a lot of takeaways are healthy. So when yeah. we talk about takeaways, it's not McDonald's or no. Burger King. People live on McDonald's and it's bad. Mm. Street food in Italy is healthy street food. Of yeah. course, no, not yeah. everywhere, but you're gonna have fried things, but, but you can have pasta. Have, but you don't even have like street food as we have it in Italy. Like it's yeah, not like true. literally like taking something from somewhere and just eating it around uh, this is literally that there are restaurants that are meant to be takeaway mm -hmm. and like you can get any type of food of True. course but people just, just choose the unhealthy they do maybe because it's kind of stressed. but they don't want to cook when I had impact with like ex-boyfriend for example uh, he was coming from a life of takeaways that's what he told me was like oh I'm really skinny but I've been eating takeaways for the last year and when he moved in with me I was cooking this food all the time because I cook food every day every meal if I'm home three times a day I'll mm -hmm. cook three meals a day and he said to me that he was living off frozen pizza frozen meals Take it with food, McDonald's. For him, it wasn't a problem until he found me. And I said, like, what the fuck? You're not cooking your food. Don't you feel unhealthy? No. Yeah. He, he started to question his health when he was with <laughs> me. And he was like, maybe mm. even if I'm skinny, my cholesterol levels are going to be high. And I was like, yeah, maybe you should check maybe yourself. Maybe you should check yourself. Yeah. Because, but he never questioned it until mm. he met me. He never questioned a lot of things. Uh, a lot of people are like that. Mm -hmm. They don't question things because they live in a bubble. <laughs> they live in a bubble of wealth. But ah. if you start talking about their wealth and how privi privi privileged, privileged? privileged yeah. they are, they start to say that they're not. They just 
don't think they're privileged. Yeah, because they you're just don't too, think they are. You're just that privileged yeah. that you don't have to question. Yeah. <laughs> I just think they don't think they are privileged. They don't think they're living in um developed country, mm -hmm. which really amazes me all the time. They just don't think they are. Yeah. It's not always the education. I do feel like that some people are born with more curiosity than others. True. And when you open the door of knowledge and mm. you just like see what's like questioning your yeah, life. Yeah. <laughs> that really opened my mind. Like yeah. uh you're just like, Oh, oh. Um, <laughs> questioning spirituality, questioning the modern philosophy was the one that really opened my mind. I don't even remember the um, philosophers. Maybe it was Nietzsche. Niche? It was about the pendulum. The life is a pendulum that yeah. it goes from. I, I think it's like, I don't want to be a fucking pendulum. I want to be active. I'm not going to be the pendulum that moves from boredom yeah, to I like... I don't want my life to be swing from one no, point to another. I, I want to be choose. active. But there was like, when I was 18, I was doing like political things at school. Mm. And I was starting like question things. Not so in a your good brain way. was. My <laughs> brain was starting to activate. I do like, I do see a switch from when I was 14 to when I was 18. And then like from 18 to now. Which I do see. <laughs> I do see it like I've grown up likely. Mm. Mm -hmm. And being here and comparing in my knowledge to other people's knowledge mm -hmm. made me understand that questioning things is good. Yes. Or Maybe being born in Italy was a good start. Yeah, true. Like, it was a bad start for us as a person. Yeah. But just good for our like yeah. growth as a person, yes. too. Because you can compare yourself and be like, oh. Yeah. Uh, takes like a lot my of mother always work. told me I don't know to finish all my food in the plate and here I see a lot of waste on food and when yeah, I tell them true. that there is a lot of waste on food they're like there well there's so much waste in Japan too yeah Japan I was so yeah I was so uncomfortable at first because mm. I was like this hurts my soul yeah. <laughs> you can't control other people no you but can't you can push people to do you the can not but you can even influence push. you can talk Oh, yeah, you can educate, you can educate people, mm -hmm. just let them know that there is another way to do things, yes. which is more sustainable. Mm -hmm. For example, about like recycling and stuff, uh -huh. when I moved to this country, I was used to do like paper, glass and plastic, food waste and general waste mm -hmm. and stuff. I moved here and my friends weren't doing it, like they were just doing one bag and I was like, I'm sorry, but I just can't do it. And It hurts my soul. Yeah, <laughs> I can't. and the other friend as well, she was like, oh no, 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 I just do one bag. I don't care. I was like, oh no. Let's try to understand how the recycling system works here. She has been here two years. She never questioned the recycling system. Mm -hmm. That's one thing that is like people don't question things. Mm -hmm. So I started to like understand that in this city specifically, they do everything together like plastic, paper, and glass all together. And then I do the general waste. When I started to work where I was working, they were just doing glass and everything else. Every time I was like, I wish they were just like caring a little bit more. And then when I moved to the other place that I was working, I started to be like, like the first day I said, if we're not doing the recycling, I'm leaving. And they listened to me. And since they were doing recycling, what I was trying to arrive to is mm -hmm. that when I started to do recycling at work, people were coming to me to make recycling questions. Mm -hmm. Starting to say to me, oh, you know what? I started to recycle at home. You know what? I started to have to check when I buy something from M&S or Tesco, if mm -hmm. it says this plastic wrap is not recycling yet. And like the other day, we received our coffee bags were coming in a mixed plastic paper bag with like a film inside to just like keep Fresh. the freshness. And the other day they were like, oh, you see, the bag is full plastic now and has a logo on the back saying fully recyclable. Like, well, Which is an improvement. It's an improvement. It's plastic <laughs> anyway. <laughs> but, but just like saying that the bag is recycling and just the fact that they noticed and they were excited about telling me this, I was like, oh, I plan to see it in someone's mind. Mm -hmm. Which is nice because like I open to curiosity and and apparently my friends at work they talk about me to other people about the things that I do at home and now I force them to recycle mm -hmm. stuff sometimes like there is like ketchup bottle mm -hmm. and they would like just throw it in a general ways and I'm like no nope. so put it on the side at the nope. end of the day you clean it and you put it in the, in the plastic and the other day the other sister man was like oh you see Elena I just washed the glass bottle and I was like I'm happy to plant a seed in people's mind my minions <laughs> how people start to realize things mm -hmm. like question that would be nice for you who planted in your mind the seed of going away or starting to study Asian languages oddly enough I always ask this question to myself yeah like it was literally me 
Mm -hmm. I remember I was in elementary school mm -hmm. and I started watching anime. Well, they were really common when we were Yeah, young. it was Cardcaptor, Sakura, Pokemon. Yeah. And the first thing I thought it was, oh, I really like this pretty girl with mm -hmm. these nice dresses. And I like Pokemon because they were very cute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, what's that? And I figured it out that they were called anime, basically animation in Japanese. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, why are these called anime and not cartoons? So you were like a... Yeah, were, and so it was like, and then internet happened and... In Japan. Yeah, I remember I had like a folder with all this picture of Cardcaptor Sakura because I like to draw. Yeah. And so I print them to just hand draw mm -hmm. everything. Oh, that's cute. Mm. And when I wanted to look on YouTube for video about Cardcaptor Sakura, mm -hmm. I figured out that in Italian there was nothing. Mm. So I was like, oh, I have to learn English because English is everywhere. Yeah. And I had a very lovely teacher in mm -hmm. elementary school. I think she was the one that made me realize I wanted to continue studying English. Yeah. She was not a really a role model, but I really looked up to her. her. Yeah. yeah. And then I kept studying languages and I got more interest into the Japanese culture. And I just felt like I never fit in in Italy mm -hmm. because even in elementary school, everything I liked was no, different. Yeah, from was different from what everybody liked. That's true. Yeah, I know that. I like Barbie, but I do like Pokemon too. Yeah. I don't know why, maybe it was my generation, I don't, it was my school, my class, localized and specific, but it seemed to me, as a little girl, that mm -hmm. you couldn't like both, and I did. You either like Barbie or you're like soccer players, and I was like, but I like both. What if I just don't yeah. to like both? And, and so I just I began addicted to the internet and I met my friend on the internet, mm -hmm. English speakers. Mm -hmm. And that's why I said, oh, so there are some people mm -hmm. who are like me. They're just not around me. Yeah. So I just makes total sense. Yeah. So I always felt like I just needed to move somewhere else mm -hmm. to feel not accepted, but to have someone I could share my interest with. Mm -hmm. So I that's my story. Interesting. I mean, I don't know if it's interesting, but that's my story. No, it is interesting because basically you were like, felt you found alone. something that you really liked and then that opened the door. Yeah. And you were like, oh, mm -hmm. like, like it would be was... more common in another country yeah. to like those things than it is in my country. Mm -hmm. And also it was very little. So of course you want to feel part of a group Yeah, you when do. you're very young. So for me it was English and the internet, which made yeah. me feel, was my safe place. Yes. Because I got to share my interest and play in The Sims. I was always <laughs> all on the time, and yeah. stuff. That's really? where I met Mariana. Oh really? On an on a emo forum. Literally meeting friends mm -hmm. when yeah, I was I, 14. I met... On forum. I am friends with people. Like, I met them on the Bleach, the anime mm -hmm. for, forum. And they were from my same city. And I was mm -hmm. so excited to... To be like, oh, someone else yeah, likes it in my same someone city. Someone who is my area. Mm -hmm. Like, I can actually talk to these people in real mm -hmm. life. And we're still friends. <laughs> that was the power of the internet my friends yeah internet was good yeah when it started now it's like a deep hole internet was really interesting at the mm. beginning when we were just like downloading internet? stuff <laughs> where you would just wanted to download the movie and then it was porn every time it was just yeah shocking. my oh my god people throwing dicks to your chat just for fun oh yeah so many like, oh don't. my god i remember like you were <laughs> seven or eight and you were just like receiving dicks you're like <laughs> what's that like, my mother doesn't have to know the way she's gonna take my computer yeah. off and you try to pull off the plan um, yeah like, yeah it, maybe it yeah. disappears i always said laptop mm. so like in my mind if I was shut down it. yeah <laughs> not like, even shutting down just closing yeah the love. I remember that I was watching a porn when I was like 12 or something and my mother wanted to come in my room and I just couldn't close it <laughs> but I was smart enough to just like create a separate like user ah. where I was using this the porn like size and just like being curious about it and my mother like wanted to come inside and I just couldn't turn my fucking computer off <laughs> Since that time, mm -hmm. because I basically lived on the internet mm -hmm. and my parents were very against it, they mm -hmm. were just telling me every day, oh, you are doing nothing with your life, spending all your day on that thing. I was just yeah. very passionate about the internet and the possibility mm -hmm. you have. And yeah. so I was like, no, you're gonna see, I'm gonna work with the internet one day. Mm -hmm. And all this time you're just telling me that I'm too stupid because I'm on the thing, being yeah. the computer. I'm just gonna prove you wrong. And now I don't even care proving them wrong. No. But literally, I'm just, I just reached the point where I just wanna be happy. So yeah. that's a good Whatever you do, yeah. <laughs> Whatever but, you do with any device. What I think is that people can accept 
things in a really slow mm -hmm. um, the process like, they can and yeah and they just can accept things when they understand them mm -hmm. uh, as well but with the internet that we have like a really big slice of people that okay. still don't understand it mm -hmm. but now they just like pretend like they accept it even though they still like mm -hmm. they don't understand it we weren't born with the internet but like, when through the steps we've seen it like moving from downloading stuff from windmix there was just like black and colored and then, <laughs> and then and then lime wire lime wire whatever it's called mm. so just it was just like moving around things and then like msn came we were sharing videos and then just, just like everything just like developed really quickly yeah we had msn until we were like 15 didn't mm -hmm. we? like i don't remember using msn on my phone Mm -hmm. as cool mm -hmm. on this maybe when i was 15 maybe even 16 mm -hmm. we still had msn cool that is a long long time, time ago. ago yeah that's true. 11 years ago we still had msn interesting so you're very active in being zero waste and yes. vegan or vegetarian yeah like trying to be more environment friendly yes so basically it's, it's a bit difficult it's not really easy to express the whole the whole thing that i think about this so mm. so you have a project in your mind i do have a project i mean you in have my a mind. goal for you and you just want to spread I when i when i try to talk to people i always try to make a sort of summary of what i think because it's not easy everything starts from industry the fact that animals are a product that have to be has to be like born and killed as you would make a bag or you would like make a sweater mm -hmm. really upsets me all the time mm -hmm. so of course living in a developed country i would talk about europe as a country even though mm -hmm. the united kingdom decided to just <laughs> Brexit. Yeah. Oopsie. Living in a really developed country, we produce more meat than we need. So animals are killed even though there is no uh, request mm -hmm. for food. And our industrialization made everything in the production of meat a uh, sort of like linear pro uh, productivity line, basically. Making it really difficult to just like see the production of meat as a like heart to heart process like 50 years ago maybe six years ago you were buying your meat from a farmer which you can still do but it's more like it's not mainstream mm -hmm. as just going to tesco and just buying your meat mm -hmm. when i was in italy mm -hmm. i was trying to be vegetarian but family around me they were just like giving me food and i think that refusing food made of meat is equal to like disrespect the animal as well because mm -hmm. if you're They're giving me yeah, if I don't eat it, this is gonna be thrown away. So, oh, which is even worse. It's even worse. So when I came here, I was able to decide what to eat mm -hmm. and to cook myself stuff. She Decided actually to wanted be, to open a restaurant. Yeah. One day, like which will be like in the restaurant history, this will be like the main thing, telling people why they shouldn't eat meat. In my opinion and just of course as i'm gonna have a niche of people that will be like vegetarian and vegan just know what the reason is for them to like being vegan and vegetarian and just like understanding this whole thing that i think and then just like being like oh and why are you vegan and vegetarian be like oh just because i love animals i don't want to kill them and i'll be like oh okay nice and just like this restaurant that it will be more a community mm -hmm. where people get more in touch with the food that mm -hmm. they eat they are more conscious about, about what they eat. Yeah, making food that gives you the nutriment that you need without a reconnected to the idea of meat. Mm -hmm. So like without uh, having the need to make some food that looks like a sausage. meat. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to be like, oh, I'm gonna give you a lentil salad that has kale, has lentils, has mm -hmm. cheese seeds, it sits inside and oil and avocado and be like, why? Because this is a balanced diet. This you got everything inside of here. You got the greens, you got the protein things you mm. got things that make you poo really well mm. which meat doesn't like go almost all the time just like makes you feel like sick. bloated yeah. and <laughs> sick trying to do a sort of community where even people who are not vegan or vegetarian try to Can understand like what's the concept of food mm. behind everything and of course doing it zero waste as well because with the industrialization as well we lost the contact with even vegetables which mm -hmm. are the closest thing that we have to hurt so if i buy a vegetable there's like four carrots packed in plastic mm -hmm. and i could easily just buy the carrots without any plastic i am seeing that as a product mm -hmm. not as a 
manufacturers. Food anymore. Mm. Like, there is like a production behind mm. that. Like, that carrot, yes, is coming from dirt, but I see it really clean and nice mm. inside the plastic package. Now sure. I can just grab it and be like, oh, I got really nice clean carrots. But what about just finding like a really dirty carrots with even just like all mm. the greens on the top? Be like, oh, that, that's a nice carrot mm. and doesn't have any plastic because that's how it's coming from. My idea about food, which would be integrated inside the idea of a restaurant where everything is like a connection. Mm -hmm. so, so you don't have a burger to look like a burger. No, it will literally vegan. be like food. Yeah, it's just it is. food as it is. Yeah. Not shape it. Yeah, I want to <laughs> create new shapes. Just not being like, oh, this is a... It's not a knockoff of a burger. Yeah. Or... <laughs> it's not it's like just... a lentil patty just because mm. it's like brown and it looks like a burger. Yeah. No, this is like, I don't know, like stew without meat. Mm -hmm. But not with a substitute, if it makes any sense. Mm -hmm. It's not a stew that we add the soy inside just to make it look like it's made of meat. Mm -hmm. It's literally a stew with like potatoes, beans and stuff mm -hmm. because I did you get all the nutrients and everything of course you don't get b12 but we all know that we need to like take vitamins as well because our body's used to them the people always say that vegan and vegetarian i mean they don't get enough vitamins yeah but i think that people are already taking vitamin supplements every yeah. day because anyway, our food yeah. is not they're not, not real anymore yeah we don't get enough vitamins from the food mm -hmm. e either way so mm -hmm. it doesn't matter if you are vegetarian vegan or whatever you want mm -hmm. it's a balanced diet that is important yeah. the things that for example with food with meat i would never go back eating meat mm -hmm. i just don't want to mm -hmm. but i do have sometimes the, the wish to eat fish mm. now it's been like almost one year since i had fish the last time but even if i have a market here selling fish i'm like i live in leicester mm -hmm. i live in the midlands of a country that's mm -hmm. not really famous for having nice fish so where is this fish coming from if i was in naples on like on the harbor and i see the fishman that is just like coming back from fishing i would probably be like oh you know what <laughs> i'm gonna have some fish because i literally see this like pre-industrial way of sourcing food mm -hmm. so, like i even got a book about that mm -hmm. about the re a restaurant that is like zero waste and they talk about pre industrial industrial food system when i read the book it opened a window in my mind because that's true the pre-industrial food system was connecting the animal that was mm -hmm. killed to the farmer that needed to kill the animal to sell the products to live mm -hmm. but we lost this connection which is not good so yeah. when i talk to people they're always like oh what about if you travel and i do understand that because mm -hmm. when i went to japan sure. it was a bit difficult mm -hmm. uh, i had fish a couple of times i starved one day for an entire day and every time we talk about traveling in different places like if i go of course to the us i'm gonna find a lot of vegan food if i stay in europe i'm gonna find a lot of vegan food and it'll be like fairly sustainable but mm -hmm. if i go to greenland i will have to eat meat or fish because the only thing they produce vegetable wise is apples no it's onions actually oh. that's the only thing they can grow really yeah because they of the can't weather? grow anything else yeah apples are important sometimes they pay like five pounds for one apple because everything is fucking important <laughs> and get like ships coming every like six months so basically what you can eat is like meat Mm -hmm. So if I ever want to do a trip, mm -hmm. this is important. I, I like to accept the fact that I won't be able to be vegetarian. Therefore. I think what Living. people forget is also the money factor. Like mm -hmm. money, like mm -hmm. about money. Because you are very privileged mm -hmm. now. Yes. You can have two avocados for one pound. Yes. But in Italy... Four one or five avocados for one pound. In Italy, for one avocado, I have to pay even four euros. Yeah. And it's not sustainable for no, my life. No, So people, even if people want to try to be more conscious about what they put in their mm -hmm. body doesn't necessarily mean they have enough money mm -hmm. which is very bad it's like when, when people want to buy ethical sustainable brands like mm -hmm. Everlane, Reformation, everything which, yeah, but fair. you cannot pay 80 euro for a t-shirt which yeah. you can buy for 5 euros in mm -hmm. H&M if yeah. you don't even that. earn that money but you do have the option sometimes for them like you do have the option to like buy second hand yeah but do you know second hand in Italy? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, the but thing I want to say, more clean. The thing yeah. is, I'm just giving option to yeah. people. I mean, the best is just to try to be as conscious and sustainable as possible in your possibilities. So be curious. Yeah, and question yeah. things. Yeah, question so things. The same exact thing. <laughs> True. So uh, don't just buy everything without questioning. I, like I'm thinking about the Neapolitan uh, saying that is like as in this in everything. Mm -hmm. Like that's what you say because it's true if you're curious in one topic you're gonna be curious in all the topics mm -hmm. okay so that was a wrap so. oh very pains oh sharp pains i think we should
go get something to eat <laughs> so thank you for joining me today and mm -hmm. thank you everyone we're just gonna eat some cauliflower mixed pasta and mm -hmm. figure it out how to cook it yeah two different <laughs> type of pasta okay different cooking times mm -hmm. So, Experiments. experimental dinner. Yeah. Okay, so we'll see you next time. Bye bye. Detto che praticamente dalle 6 e mezza del mattino ho tornato a casa. Sì, poverino. Questo accento puttino all'anno che mi uscito. Dalle 6 e mezza del mattino ho tornato a casa. Sofia Lore, non so Sembrava la canzone Crazy Frog. Che la buona. Sono amico di Sofia Lore.